watching another episode of Dirty Laundry, and I'm interviewing Surfer Blood. This is one person of Surfer Blood. Hey. hey. And this is number two. Um, well, we kind of knew the review was going to come out that night, and we were at a bar in Lake Worth called Harry's Banana Farm, which I'm going to plug for. Harry's? It's some, uh... All right, that's like four plugs already. <laughs> Can I'm you bad, plug something it? for me? We picked, we, we picked him up, like, me and my friend, we, as soon as, because we kind of knew something might have come out that night, we knew we were going to get reviewed. Well, at least we, for, it was like a countdown for like three nights, because we didn't know exactly when it was going to come out. But, uh, we picked up JP and put him on top of the bar. Fucking, uh, at noon or midnight. Yeah, it was it was, it was cool. Um, uh, yeah, I guess I, that's like super important these days too, because I'm um, uh, a lot of like publications who probably one time had an original voice have kind of lost it. So yeah. when someone like you know kind of has the guts to be like, well, I like this band and no one's ever heard of them, but I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that they're really good. Right. Um, you know, you gotta respect them for doing that. <laughs> high school, him and me had, um, uh, we went to the same high school for a while, and we had a rivalry, because in the eighth grade, I thought he was like some like, you know, prepster dude, and I was like some crusty punk kid, like, someone got nachos on someone's shirt, that's what it was, um, my best friend at the time got nachos on his friend's shirt, like, he's like a really, like, it was like a really punk move to make, he's like, oh yeah, uh. exactly, and then a food fight escalated, and, you know, things were, whoa, so then, like he, in all those John Hughes films, were people flipping tables? No, it wasn't. It wasn't that insane because it got broken up almost immediately. And he was, um, uh, he was friends with the, um, uh, the assistant principal's son. So nothing happened to him, and my friends all got in trouble because we were the underdogs, you know. Nice. It was like the outsiders. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then like he moved in with my good friend in Orlando when we were both going to college there. And I'm just like, oh, you hang out with this guy? Like, but I'm uh, I was like, no, TJ's really cool. Give him a chance. And since I was over the house all the time, since I was pretty much like couch hopping. Um, we got to know each other, and it was like, yeah, we liked the same music, and they had stuff set up all the time, so, you know, we started playing together, and it was just, it just worked, and we've been best friends ever since. We were playing in this warehouse space, right, when we were first starting out, um, uh, and, like, we were like, oh, man, we want to go on tour, but we don't have a van, and we're all broke, and our parents won't give us any money, and, you know, and they, we were, we were on um, uh, we were having this rehearsal space and the landlord brings in this new like group and he's like, oh, I know them and I'm totally cool with them, like they're totally cool. And like we've been sharing with this other band that he knew for a while and they'd been really respectful and like never had like borrowed anything without asking or whatever. Right. And then one day, our, the first day our PA goes missing and it's all like, I'm uh, you know, like, oh, maybe they borrowed it for a show and didn't tell us, like, let's just give them the benefit of the doubt. And then like two days later, my amplifier goes missing and then I freak out. And then we all get our stuff out of there. It turns out this kid is um, uh, this new kid who doesn't really know the landlord at all. He just said that He's is using crack cocaine, um, uh, and is pawning our stuff because we figured out because we have a friend at the um, uh, the sheriff's department, and he like you have to fingerprint something when you pawn it. Right. So you know, like his name was all over it, and we located the pawn shop. And, oh my god. And his dad's like, "What do I have to do so you don't press charges against my son?" And I said, "Well, we really need a van." And like, um, uh, so he gave us like 1200 bucks to go buy like a cheap van. And, and replace your PA and your amp? Well, we got it all back through the police department. Right. Um, but yeah, so then we went and got a van. Wow. And we went up to New York and we were like, you know, and like no one was coming to our shows. Like, um, uh, and we were like, it was, and we were having a great time because we were just like on the road and like young and like, you know, it was the furthest like some of us had ever been from home. That's awesome. Um, and then, you know, like, I guess like, I don't know to show like how like what a blog age we live in like Brooklyn Vegan said a few little tidbits about us and um, uh, my friend Jacob Graham who's in this band called The Drums mm -hmm. in New York um, I don't know if you've heard of them but they're really big in Europe <laughs> um, but no he recommended to Leo who runs the label to come check us out and he came and saw us and I guess he really liked it because he gave us his phone number or we gave him our phone number and he called us the next day and we have been with them now for close to seven months. Has there been anyone that you found out was a fan of the band and you were surprised? 
Anthony Keith is Anthony Keith was pretty really? cool. Really? Yeah. How'd you find out Anthony Keith was a fan? They're friends of friends. Friend. Yeah, actually, um, uh, we toured with Japan Droids recently. They're from Vancouver. They're yeah, another yeah. new band. Um, they've been around for a little while. Yeah, they've been... Um, uh, they're, they're relatively new, but they, they've been working hard, and, you know, they're like old hands at this now. Like, they were really good and professional about their touring. But their tour manager... Their tour manager's best friend's baby's daddy is Anthony Kiedis. <laughs> um, and I guess, like, somehow, like... Baby's daddy. She, like, introduced um, uh, him to it, and now he's really into it. Every time... Like she's over there. He's like, "Hey, how are my, how are the surfing blood dudes doing? Are they all right?" That's so, awesome. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I used to love California Cajun when I was um, like a freshman in high school. I thought it was so cool. So. Did you license a song to the Vampire Diaries? We did. Um, and I saw it. I think I actually saw it, and it was like so low in the background. It was like the music that was playing at a party. So like you know at this party in this hypothetical vampire world, like, right. you know, Surfer Blood was playing, and I'm like, well, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. rad. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any problem with it. I mean, unless it's a show about, like, you know, like, I'm uh, hitting women or, like, destroying the environment on purpose. Or, like, a tampon commercial or something. A tampon commercial? That's... <laughs> that's, just, that's just weird. <laughs>